How many times have you performed naked? Don't get called too much about that anymore. <laughs> it used to be, it used to be a, it, it used to be, a, it's more of a, a stage effect now. Yes. I, when I did the back eye in Dionysus in 69, when I would be 25 years old, I was naked. Totally naked. It was the whole thing? No, 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 only, only when uh, the, the Furies or whatever it comes. I can't wait, unforgettable classic story. Anyways, and I t had to tell my mother and father who were coming to see it. Mom, I'm going to be naked. <laughs> she went, well, I've seen you naked before. <laughs> so my mother could say. And I mean, then in DNC, 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 yeah. Uh, you had a fight and you were naked. Yeah. What was that? You like? worry that your penis is going to be too small. I, you know, that's really the or only smaller. thing. smaller. Well, it's smaller, given that, yeah, yeah, you know, and it kind of is like a war-like kind of emergency performing, so you tend Did to you have suck any... it up into your body. Um, and your massive acting techniques, you were able to deal with this problem? Uh, well, you, you, I kept hands moving, and I, I didn't stay uh, still long enough. Um, and then in um, Festin, now, I wasn't I naked, I wasn't naked, but I was right down to my underwear. And that was only a couple of years ago. So that becomes a whole different kettle of fish. At my age, when you expose your body, it becomes, it's more of a, you know, a stage effect. <laughs> the why I cheer when I see an actor or actress who is, you know, without, so to speak, and has not pumped and has not done surgery and has not gone to the gym and are actually talking about colonialism and cultural colonialism and image colonialism that actually is a human being there taught, telling me a story. I cheer when I see that happens. You know, when Peter O'Toole of Lawrence of Arabia is stripped and you just see a pathetic white, unconditioned white body, you cheer because it's life, it's a connection, as opposed to seeing the next molded, surgical, whatever. Uh, I just, we're off topic. <laughs> you have a you have a an acting quality that I envy to the end of my time. You have I always think perform you were balanced up between an actor and a performer. And are you more actor than performer? Or are you more performer than actor? Or whatever. You have this performance instinct that I don't have, and I see it when you get up and go, so to speak. Where does that come from? Well, well it, it it could be just your imagination. I mean, I am the last person to ask about my work because I'm on the inside. We talked about this earlier. Well, and that's been a huge thing to me, is to actually go, wait a minute. What they're seeing out there, their world is entirely different, including directors. Right. And what I am experiencing here. And part of it has to do with, for me, was to have to do with feeling all the time, going back to Charlie Fairbanks in a certain extent, what I'm doing here is so lame and inept. And why don't I actually feel like this person? You know, there's some level like that I always expected I would totally be transformed in a way and become a different person, another person, by acting. I've come to believe that that isn't actually it. That the experience of doing it is much more complex than that. And it isn't about losing oneself in the sense that I thought. That it has to do, it's more like it would seem to me, though I'm not a concert pianist. You didn't know that, did you? I, I think you've often thought that I was. You clothes or unclothed? <laughs> often, often. But when you're playing, like, uh, with these, you know, when you, somebody does a you know, piano concerto, part of playing piano, I only know this because my children took piano lessons, was you have to be conscious of getting the fingering right and setting up the finger, right? Otherwise, you'll get into problems. And acting is a lot like that, it seems to me, too. That w when you get to know the piece and rehearse the piece and the process has, part of your mind is also on running the, the show and being ready to do something that's going to come up that you know because... Right. And, and um, so you describing my performance and being a performance of an actor, I have no... I have no point of view on that. Because any time I get to see myself act, which is either, it has to be a film, I'm just appalled at how different it looks oh, to I my see. inner, how I thought I looked from the inside of doing. Does it always feel better on the inside, how you feel it is? Oh, well, I've come to the point where I go, actually seeing it from the outside is no f 
news to me whatsoever. It's just discouraging and disheartening. That's true with a lot of people with their voice, right? You hear the voice from the inside yeah, of yourself, yeah, then you exactly. hear it recorded and go, that's awful. No, exactly. And I've got used to that feeling, and I go, that is my voice. It does sound awful, but I know that's not what it is. And so I don't, I don't see the point of seeing myself act on the outside. But I, when, when I watch Billy Bishop, and I watch you launch into the different characters, and I thought, you know, I, Robert goes, well, you know, I would like to do that, but no, I could never do that play. And I could never do that play because I, I don't have that launch thing, that part of you that is totally uncareful on stage. I mean, the carefulness that I have a little bit, I you know it's a little bit there, is a kind of a crutch. And you are not careful on stage, and that's an enormous quality, that you will launch, you will risk, you will go, and I link that to your performer instinct, as well as a wonderful actor, but you have a strong performing instinct. And some actors don't have that performing instinct, they're like actors. And to see that is, I'm a huge fan of it, because I don't have it. You don't have to say anything. Well, what I want to say is, I, I love that, where you're kind of slightly out of control. And it doesn't happen all the time. And I'm speaking now, I never get it in film. I, I've never, you, I find it, it's very hard to find in television terms, everybody's moving so fast, you don't get to rehearse anything, and you don't want to fuck up. I mean, a lot of times you're just acting, you know, and it, it, it's where to find that space with the people and cameras, you know, in front of you, and, and people doing that, that, that kind of assault in your concentration. So I'm always looking when I'm filming, for that little nanosecond of space that's just me and the material. And it's very hard to find. Because it's not something, I mean, if I am brave and in the moment, it's, it's because I've earned the right to be brave and in the moment because of a process that I have suffered through from not knowing how to do this or not knowing what it is. And it only seems to me that the ability, for me at any rate, to be relaxed enough to know, um, right. to actually respond and go, oh, geez, I did that different, and didn't think about it, just did it, it comes out of a deep sense of process that I've, uh, I've arrived at. It's, it's the opposite of the improv in a sense. It's, it, well, it's not like improving in that sense where you just, I'm just going to make up things as they come along. Which I like, I mean, I can do, but I feel very uncomfortable doing improv. But, I, so that's all I'm saying is that what you, I, I find that I want to learn, I want to work, I want to practice and practice and practice or run it and run, or whatever it is, this process, till I can transcend.